One time for your mind, we haven't got to do this in a while, but we're back with some interesting stuff. And interestingly enough, this week, the topics that Brian and I will both talk about involve violence in ways that we probably did not want to talk about. Uh, and Brian has something that involves something very saddening, actually, uh, around mm-hmm. the world of boxing, and particularly uh, from a boxer mm-hmm. from his home country of Puerto Rico. Uh, Brian, I'll let you start with that before I get into uh, people behaving badly across the pond. What you got? In 2015, uh, I first heard about, or rather 2014, actually, I first heard about this fighter named Felix Verdejo, as a lot of people did. I had vaguely known of him from like the Olympics in 2012, but in 2014 is when he won ESPN prospect of the year, top ranked prospect of the year. You had a feeling he was next up. Dan Raphael from ESPN at the time was writing a whole bunch of things about him. Um, And then Felix Trinidad meets him. It's a big deal. Like this is supposed to be next. And this is around the time where Miguel Cotto is sort of stepping, you know, out the door and he ends up retiring in 2017. And then it's like, it's right there for Felix Verdejo to sort of carry the mantle in Puerto Rican boxing. And if you guys know, I mean, if you've seen La Cultura piece that we've talked about up here and something that we've did and how much that matters to Puerto Ricans, uh, boxing is something that is a staple. When you think about sports on the Island, you think about boxing, baseball and basketball. And Felix Verdejo was supposed to be somebody who was next in that lineage of being a, a world champion and all of those things, not just a world champion, but a superstar, right? So Thursday, or rather Friday, I see on my phone that he's being questioned for uh, his potential involvement with this missing woman in Puerto Rico named Kesla. Uh, Kesla, um, Kesla Rodriguez Ortiz is her full name. Um, Kesla Marlon Rodriguez Ortiz. And she uh, had been missing since Thursday. Authorities questioned Felix Verdejo, and he basically was, uh, you know, not really cooperating with the investigation at the advice of his lawyer. Come to find out Saturday, um, Kesla's found dead, and Felix has to talk. And she's found dead in a lake uh, in San Juan somewhere. I forget the lake's name. Um, I had written a story on Sunday that I ended up rearranging a little bit Monday morning before it went up. It's a column on Latino Rebels about this. So you can check that out. Shout out to past guest Julio Ricardo Varela, who sort of set that up also. So, um, you know, I ended up writing about the Verdejo thing and just how, like in watching him over the years, He's always been somebody you expected more from, and he's always been kind of a, not kind of, he's always been a disappointment because he would have these moments that would give you sort of hope as a fighter, and then he would have these moments where it's like he would come up short, he had a lackluster performance, he still won, but it was barely a a good decision for him, all these sort of things. And then what happens is he eventually loses in a fight in 2018, which I talked about in the piece where I was going to build a feature story around him. And then he ended up losing. So I had to sort of change my idea or whatever. I had met him, interviewed him the whole time, the whole thing. And then he lost in 2019. Um, Or no, he didn't lose in 2019. He had a lackluster win when he returned in 2019. And then in 2021, uh, 2020, rather late December, excuse me, he lost again in a fight that he was um, supposed to be very good in. And look, I read the sort of details, and that's what was really jarring about this because Kesla uh, was a woman he was involved with. Felix was 27 years old, about to be 28 in May. Kesla was 27 when she was found dead and pregnant with their child, uh, one month pregnant. So basically the criminal complaint says this, and I'm gonna read this. This is from Andrea Gonzalez Ramirez, who uh, you know, apparently this was reported that Felix contacted the victim, arranged to meet near her residence. Um, there was something about a a black Dodge Durango SUV. And if you Google Felix, there's pictures of him with this Dodge Durango or whatever. Um following a conversation between Felix and the victim, it says that he punched the victim in the face injected her with a syringe uh, filled with substances purchased from a drunk point. Um, He and the witness then, he and the witness, because there was another person in there, he and the witness then restrained the victim's arms and feet with a wire. A block was tied to the victim. The witness took the keys uh, from the victim and, um, you know, boarded the Kia and then they threw her off the bridge. And then he apparently also for 
whatever reason shot at her body once um and that's pretty much what happened uh fbi was looking for him and then sunday night he turned himself in so that's going on right now and i just want to say like you know this is already one of the most disappointing athletes in my lifetime because of who he was supposed to be and who he was not now you're talking about somebody who's just you know a dude who while married by the way to another woman with a child uh kills this other woman and that he was involved with and it just doesn't make any sense and you always and you always wonder like why among other things but you also wonder like and my main question would be like dude what did you think was going to happen like instead of just sort of dealing with this because you messed up and sort of you know taking care of two different families or whatever the decision was that you disregarded her life so much that you just decided to end it at 27 years old you know i'm 27 my girlfriend's about to be 27 like this hit me in a very specific way where i'm like you know i can't even imagine all the sort of collateral things that are going on here so look if you want to read the piece that i wrote about him being a fucking failure you can read that on latino rebels but it's not really about that it's also about just the rise and sort of domestic violence on the island uh there was a state of, the, of, of emergency declared for puerto rico in january about domestic violence against women which activists have been pushing for for a long time so hopefully we can just do better i don't know what else to really yeah, say yeah I, I had the same question you had which is what did he think was going to happen and also the person who helped him what did they think was going to happen uh, and, and and i understand people will about ride or die be there for their friends but for that like the idea to do that and to do this with one of your friends and the it shows you as you said brian the lack of respect he had for this woman i mean to take somebody's life when your life is not in danger uh because she's pregnant with your child and whatever transpired that you know my my heart goes out to that woman and her family um and this is why women are speaking out against domestic violence because things can escalate to things like this we've seen this with other athletes this is why women are afraid a lot. This is the fear that they have, that these things can even happen. Um, and, you know, his boxing career on this, and, I'm, and much that Brian wrote about it in the piece on Latino Rebels is secondary here. Uh, the disappointment he's been and all that, that, that is secondary here. Uh, a woman lost her life, a family lost a daughter, a uh, potential child uh, never come to this world, a mother never gets to raise that child. Um, so, you know, I don't think you have to be a parent. You don't have to be, uh, the same age. You don't have to be Puerto Rican. This, this hits home. If you care about humanity and what is done right. And it is a despicable, obviously act by Felix Verdejo, Verdejo. And, um, I, I believe Brian wrote in the piece, he can face up to the death penalty, uh, in, in Puerto yeah, Rico. He might, he might, he might be eligible for the death penalty. penalty. And no matter what you feel about that. Or how you feel about the death penalty um you know he's he's going to be prosecuted hopefully to the fullest extent of the law he was already uh, denied bail too i don't know what justice that family is going to get uh, and i don't think there's any justice that could bring their daughter back but it it i have no other words to say but it's disgusting just absolutely disgusting and and, and i also want to point out there's something i pointed out in the piece as well because it's something i didn't even know prior but um so i i don't know the extent of the relationship portion of it but apparently he had been linked to her some way for like 11 years and she mm. even had his nickname was el diamante was and she, she had a tattoo she had the she had a diamond tattoo dedicated to him on her back and that's how it was identified that her family members knew it was her so. and which is sad enough and when you know men treat women like they're disposable which is literally what he did here literally what he did here and that is not to make fun of it i'm just saying this is how it escalates when we don't value women and this is the way we treat them you just treat them like disposable their life is disposable and there's no care or regard and that's that's what's truly disgusting to me in, in this story it's not just a sports story but it's a it's a human issue story domestic violence that continues to go on and plague women across the world not just this country across the world um and it's it's, it's truly sad but check out brian's piece on Latino Rebels, uh, re really, really good one. Um, and he's got a lot more good work coming up on that platform.